Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I won't do a full review of the game since Super GT has already done a good job on that, but rather make some fact finding videos for the Gran Turismo game. They will be put in a separate playlist and will be marked on a thumbnail with the green borders. What I will do in this series are talk about questions that are coming up when playing the game, uh, things that change, bugs, novelties, news, tips and tricks, you name it. The first fact I will talk about will be if the TDFB still works on Gran Turismo 7. The TDFB is a part of the TGT steering wheel and something that I really appreciate a lot. In fact, it is one of the major reasons why the TGT is still mounted on my seat. It is something that no other steering wheel has so far and how subtle it may be, I like it. Enough even to spend an entire video on it. For those that don't know the TDFB or Trustmaster Depth Force Feedback, it is a transducer, meaning it transforms a received signal into another signal, or in this case, it takes the data that Gran Turismo Sport delivers and converts it in kinetic energy. What this received data from the game is, I'm still not sure. And if someone can explain the technical details, please do so in the comments. The kinetic energy it outputs can be described as a vibration going through the steering column. It works in combination with the rest of the force feedback coming from the wheel and creates a very catchy effect when you lose grip or drive over some curbs. And that is what I wanted to test in the new Gran Turismo 7. Surely the game was already close to completion when Polyphony Digital brought out the news that Fanatec would become the game supplier of the official wheel. Was the support for the TDFB already coded by that moment or more to the point, does it still work in GT7? My first stop to find out was going to the product page of the TGT2 again and then I noticed this. That did get me a bit worried. I mean, I, it specifically says for Gran Turismo Sport and there is no mention of Gran Turismo 7 on the page. If I were them and struggling with the sales of the TGT due to the heavy competition, I would put it in block letters on my webpage. I had been asking about the feature on their Twitter account, but again, since I'm a new user there, I was ignored by them and had no other option than to wait until I received Gran Turismo 7 and could test it myself. Now, it is one thing to test if it is still available in GT7 and actually proving it to you. I mean, yes, I can feel it, but you can't. So what I did is, is I just recorded the sound the bass makes when using it and to compare it. First, I recorded the sound with the TDFB disabled and then compared it to the audio curve with the TDFB enabled. This revealed that whenever the TDFB was activated, you would feel the vibrations and it was accompanied by a spiking in the sound mapping. You can see whenever I go over the curb or when I take some turns that the sound amplifies. Next I compare the TDFB in Gran Turismo Sport and Gran Turismo 7 with the same track and car and to my relief I could still feel the same vibrations I felt before. It's funny how much you miss such a small detail once it's gone so I'm really really happy that the TDFB is still working. So after this test, I am really confident in recommending the TGT and TGT2 since it is the same hardware for Gran Turismo 7. With the promotion I talked about in my last video, the complete TGT2 comes at 5, 9, um, 599 euro, which is a very sharp price. But also on the secondary markets, you can see the TGT and TGT2 pop up at interesting prices due to players changing to the new Fanatec GTDD Pro and selling their old hardware. I'm glad that at least with all the Trustmaster DD commotion and bad news I have to provide you, that for once I can give you some good news too. Fact number two I wanted to talk about briefly are the braking points in GT7. It seems they are replaced now by an overhead marker to indicate the braking zone. I'm not sure if I'm such a fan of it. With my first testing now, uh, it did seem a lot more difficult to pinpoint the exact braking point which is really necessary if you race on a track you barely raced on before. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of it, better or not. To conclude the first video in a series of fact finding in Gran Turismo 7, I want to ask you all that play the game to share your findings with me so we can inform our community and help them with the same questions we might have. Thank you all for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like, I wish you also tons of racing pleasure and we'll see you all next video.